Hello everyone, and welcome to AutoCAD episode 20, Magic Tricks Have Consequences. That's right, and today we will be finishing off the story of the Minotaur and the general Minos Theseus saga. So you're looking forward to that? I am, are you? Yep, very much so. So, last time we left off with Minos II heading towards Sicily to deal with Daedalus. Do you remember that? I do. Perfect. Well, we're picking up from here. We're first going to polish off some extra details from our saga over the past two episodes, which I got thanks to Apollodorus. Now, apparently, Ariadne had specifically asked Daedalus how Theseus could get out of the labyrinth, and apparently the string is tied to the door of the labyrinth at one end, and that okay. doesn't make sense because otherwise it could just move around. Yeah, very true. I hadn't really thought about that. Apollodorus specifically says that the Minotaur was killed by Theseus punching it, which I don't know that we need those details, but okay. He also says that Daedalus built the labyrinth in imitation of one in Egypt, because of course he does. Get yourself someone who loves you as much as Diodorus loves Egypt is pretty much the watchword of this show. But this did get me going down a bit of a rabbit hole, because I started thinking, well, could there be actual inspiration for a labyrinth in Egypt, based on what Diodorus is saying? So I had a look at some burial structures. Um, the first one I thought of was, say, Tutankhamun's tomb in the Valley of the Kings, KB62, but this is fairly simple. However, this wasn't a pyramid, and my main thought was, could a pyramid have been the inspiration, if anything, for what Diodorus is saying? Now, there's a paper which uses cosmic rays to try and work out whether there's structures inside one of the Great Pyramids of Giza that we're not aware of. At the time of publication, only 19% of the pyramid had been explored. Although the structure they show in the paper was fairly simple, and the possibility of there being other rooms we don't know about was rejected using their method, there are quite a few passageways shown in the drawing in their paper. So the bottom line is, I'm not really sure, but I suppose it's possible that the passageways and narrow corridors in a pyramid or Egyptian burial structure could have inspired what Diodorus is saying. Might be an intriguing question to ask an Egyptologist, I suppose. Yeah. Moving on a little ways, Icarus was apparently the son of Daedalus via Naucrate, who was a slave of Minos II, so clearly Daedalus had been on the island of Crete for quite some time. But anyway, the situation we ended up with, aside from all those details, is that Daedalus is on Sicily, and Minos is trying to find him. So do you want to pick up with the story? Yep. Minos hunted down Daedalus by asking a riddle to whoever he met. He would give them a curled seashell and said that he would give a big prize to whoever could pass some strings through the shell, so in one end and out the other. Okay, so basically asking them to thread string through the seashell and saying there's a big cash reward to whoever does this successfully. Exactly. He eventually arrived at the royal court of Cocalus, king of Camicus in Sicily. Right. A footnote in Pinda explicitly says that Cocalus was king of all of Sicily. Okay. Pausanias mentions Cocalus but says nothing more on the subject. Right, so the bottom line is we're with King Cocalus in Sicily. Exactly. Okay. This is where Daedalus had hidden, by right. the way. Minos gave him the riddle and Cocalus said he would solve it. He then handed it to Daedalus, presumably separately given that he was hidden in Calmicus. I suppose so. It's funny to imagine Daedalus just sat right next to Cocalus, who then very prominently hands him the shell and says, Daedalus, the one who's meant to be hidden, can you solve it? <laughs> It is very funny. Yeah. Daedalus drilled a hole into it. Okay. Because, you know, he's a smart boy. Yeah. Clearly. The string was tied to an ant, which was allowed to crawl through the shell. Right. Which is very smart thinking. Yeah. Daedalus put honey at the hole he had built to lure the ants through. Okay. Still a very smart cookie. Yeah. I'm very taken with the idea of how exactly you tie string around an ant. That doesn't seem like the easiest of tasks. Oh no, I'm sure it's fine. You probably just spent 12 hours on that alone, just with the ant running around the room. Now, I get the impression, although we won't go into it any further here, that apparently there are some parallels between what Daedalus is doing and the content of various Indian stories as well. Oh really? I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't really explore it any further in the paper that mentioned this. We I'm should not... get to it at some point. Yeah, we should definitely talk about this at some point. It might be interesting as a form of comparative mythology. Minos was handed the shell back, and guess what? What? He immediately worked out that Daedalus was at Chemicus. That makes sense, because Cocalus has essentially said, yes, I will solve this, don't you worry, Minos, I'm very smart and good at riddles, and then comes back with a solution that seems exactly like something Daedalus would do. Exactly. Well, how about you take us to the next part? Yep. Pretty obviously, Minos asked Cocalus to surrender Daedalus to him. 
because, well, he's a wanted fugitive for all that Minotaur business. Diodorus says that Cocalus had befriended Daedalus because of how smart he was, and apparently Daedalus had built lots of things in Sicily during his time there, including a bath and a settlement on rock, which was the most impregnable on the island. And as a matter of fact, this was where Cocalus had put his court, and I believe it's actually Camacus itself. He also built something which released steam into a cave, which would apparently help cure people of various illnesses. So basically Daedalus was very valuable to Cocalus. Yes, and I like to imagine this is the world's first spa treatment he's just built. <laughs> but yes, Cocalus thought Daedalus was invaluable and pretty understandably didn't want to give him up. But he said yes to Minos' demands and then threw a feast for him. Okay. In terms of what happened next, Apollodorus then says that Minos died. Okay. He was either killed by Cocalus' daughters, or else he was soaked in boiling hot water. And Whichever one you prefer. Yes, there's quite a few versions rolling around, we'll go through a few of them here, but the gist is basically the same. Supposedly, the account of someone called Zenobius says that Cocalus' daughters were to pour pitch on him instead of water. And the scoliast on Pindar says that Daedalus asked the daughters to feed water through a pipe system which ended in the ceiling, killing him that way. Similarly, Pindar himself says that Daedalus enlisted the help of Cocalus' daughters to kill Minos by means of a boiling hot water stream gushing down on him. So either way, Minos dies at the hands of the daughters. So the general gist I'm getting from this is that Cocalus might have been involved, as might Daedalus, but either way, Minos is now dead. But I believe, and this is something you were going to pick up with, that Diodorus actually has a different version of events entirely. Do you want to take a it? He does, he does. He says that Minos and his army landed at Arcragas. Okay. He asks Cocalus to surrender Daedalus to him, but doesn't mention the story of the shell, which, right. you know, I like the story of the shell. Yeah, it's the main selling point of this episode, I suppose, the magic trick which has a consequence. Exactly. Yeah. Cocalus invited him in and agreed to everything, just like that. Yep. However, he retained Minos for too long in hot water while he was having a bath, Thereby killing him. Okay, so in all of these versions, I'm getting a strong impression of Cocalus saying, yes, absolutely, with all his fingers crossed behind his back. Exactly. Maybe that means he had him locked in the bath, the fact that, you know, he was having a bath that killed him, or he drowned, or, you know, he told him, no, no, you have to stay longer, longer, the longer the better, and then, you know, at one point, he just dies. Yeah, I get the impression that the only thing Diodorus' text actually says is that he retained him for too long in hot water while having a bath, which is extremely vague. He sent the corpse back to the people of Crete, saying that Minos had tripped while having a bath and therefore died, Yeah, which, you know, is a lie. It sounds very much like the excuse <laughs> Rob and Jamie always gave on Totalus Rancium of cutting their own head off while shaving. <laughs> it's that level of excuse that everyone is going to see through. His soldiers buried him, presumably on Crete. Yep. And after that, the soldiers fell into infighting and their ships were burned by the Sicilian on the order of Cocalus. Okay, so now we've got some Cretan soldiers just stuck on Sicily. They settled in a section of Sicily which was named Minoa after their monarch. Yep. They took over some land and created a city called Engium. Okay. Well, Herodotus finally has a few details that are different again, this time differing after Minos dies. The Cretans arrived on Sicily after Minos died, apparently, not arriving there with him, and laid siege to a city called Camacus, which we already discussed. Presumably, this is the really well-defended one, and that's why I mentioned it earlier, because they could not break through. They moved on, but during their journey, a storm hit, driving them ashore and scuttling their fleet. So, either way, whether you believe Diodorus or Herodotus, we do end up with a fleet that's just destroyed. They later founded Hyria and other cities. Now, as our final point, you might be wondering what ends up happening to Daedalus, the man who's caused all this grief. A little bit. Well, his story isn't actually that exciting from here on in. He apparently dies via snake bite, possibly in the area where Sarpedon ruled called Telmesos. Do you remember Sarpedon as the son of Zeus and Europa? Yes, I do. So Sarpedon appears to still be alive in this version, so either this version has Minos being just a son of Zeus and it's the two brothers, or else maybe Minos exiled his granduncle in our version of events. As I've said before, there's ambiguity as to who exactly we're talking about when we say Minos, because sometimes there's one and sometimes there's two of them. Now, I struggled to find any reliable sources on Daedalus' death which I could actually access, but apparently Daedalus just dies from a snake in the territory of Sarpedon. Okay. According to Herodotus, Minos and Sarpedon had previously fought for control of Crete, so like I said, maybe he was just exiled by his relative. 
Sarpedon was expelled and created a kingdom for himself in Asia, which is where Daedalus ends up. Now, I get the impression, and I think this is something you're going to tell us a bit more about, that Minos has an afterlife we should discuss, because he's one of four judges in the underworld. So there's Minos, Radamanthus, Aeacus, and Triptolemus. Have you got any more details here? Yes. Radamanthus has jurisdiction over Asia, while Aeacus was the European master. Okay. Minos was the one to whom appeals were sent. Right. This Minos is, however, the son of Zeus. So maybe not necessarily the same as our Minos II. Okay, as we've said before, pinch of salt with the name Minos all round. Yeah, because sometimes Minos I and Minos II are the same individual. Okay. In Dante's Inferno, Minos sits in the second circle of hell. And ponder what the misdeed of the people arriving are and act as a judge for the dead. It tells Dante to beware of how he goes and Virgil is guided not to hinder his entering. Okay, so we've got an afterlife with an actually famous story from literature to end the episode with. Exactly. Well, that does bring us to the end of our episode. We hope you enjoyed it, and thank you for listening. Yes, you can find us on Instagram. Recently, we've just created an account. We post stuff. Go have a look. You'll see for yourself. And, you know, find us on our website. Have a look. It's really interesting. Yep, exactly. And have a great week, everyone. Have a great week. So, we've finished with the Minotaur. How do you feel about that? Thank you.